Welcome back, you guys. It's really good to see all of you. If you've been a long time subscriber, we really appreciate you joining us, checking it out. If you're new to this channel, please sit back and enjoy some glass blowing and some educational tips and hanging out with Kevin and I. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with those notifications. Absolutely, we're excited to have you guys back doing a sweet little Reticello bubble cap this week. Yes. It's a nice, uh, nice color tubing combo there. Very nice. Yeah, fun one with a tall neck for fun. A little flair, I yeah. like it. You hear you've been doing some cool stuff in the online school as well? Yeah, the online school has been growing a lot. We have a video every week. Um, Kevin is about to be on a video for setting up your own photo booth. So we'll put that out soon. Make sure you sign up to the online school so you know how to take good pictures. And if you want more contact with myself, I'm happy to answer questions and be there as a mentor for you. If you have questions for photography, I know Kevin is more than willing to, to help you get set up with your stuff. Absolutely, I love talking shop. Yeah. Uh, we also wanted to thank our sponsor, as always, Mountain Glass Arts. Thanks so much for sponsoring, and they are the best place to go get tools, supplies, color, and they have stuff from a lot of like boutique makers as well. You know, a lot of glass blowers and color makers who make stuff mountain mountain stocks. Yeah, and one cool thing I learned about Mountain Glass this week when I was talking with Joe is that they can custom make you your own opals. Um, they have, I guess, a connection directly with the factory, and they're shipping me with 20 or something droplet opals. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, those are so, gonna be sweet. So I'll look for those on my work, but definitely think about mountain glasses if you're thinking about opals. They've got a lot of different varieties and can make custom shapes for you guys. And tell Joe you saw it here on the videos and I think you still get a little discount. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Thanks again to Mountain Glass Arts. Cool. Um, what else we got? I think we gotta make sure that people stick around because we're giving away that cup uh, at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. So we'll be giving that away to somebody who commented on the last one. So make sure to drop a question or a comment below, especially questions. We love those. Yeah, the questions for sure. Comments, some of them are just amazing. We've, we've read some actually amazing comments and we'd love for you guys to stick around just so you can watch the rest of this video and get a chance to win that. But I think we'll just get in the studio and bust this little carb cap out. Red cello time, let's do it. All right, guys, we'll see you in there. All right, so I'm just gonna grab this tubing here. It's a vac stack tubing that I made that has clear rods. And for the stringers, I use a star white by North Star. So it's just stringers pulled down and then everything else is clear. Just the same way you would do any other vac stack, but you wanna be sure you keep the lines nice and straight since you uh, wanna be able to make the spiral very even. Yeah, that's kind of what happened when um, I was making this vac stack tubing and I was using a bunch of transparent colors and I stretched it out and then twisted it up and I thought, wow, if I twist this up with clear and white, this could make some really cool reticello tubing. And that's kind of how I stumbled on this technique. Very cool. So you're just doing a good old uh, blow tube connection there and you're gonna cut this piece of tubing in half because you'll need two sections of tubing that are about the same length. Yeah, exactly. One of them you can see is going to be narrower than the other. You can see that's already the way that this tubing is set up. The stuff on the right side is more narrow than the section on the left side. And that uh, will be the one, the, the narrow one will be the one that goes inside the sleeve and the other one will be the outer sleeve. Yeah, so now I'm just going to go on to my rollers. And that's a, the blade roller thing that I like to use by Fire Kiss Glass. And it provides a really nice even, even cut line for me to break it off you're just going to close this up and you're always making sure to keep your terminations nice and centered when you're working with this tubing because you really be able to tell with the lines totally totally and that that stuff comes especially more important as you're doing your termination but but as you work you want to make sure that you try to do each step as clean as possible even if maybe you're working on a section that's not going to be seen so much or maybe on the bottom of the piece, but it's so nice when somebody looks at the little details of your piece and thinks about how you put conscious thought into all the little areas that need to be perfect. So now you're gonna start twisting this tubing up a little bit and you're just rotating one hand a little bit faster than the other as you get that heat in where you want it to twist. Yeah, and I'm doing it in sections too, as opposed to all at once. And I feel like this gives me more precision some people may choose to do this all at once and that's totally a fine way to do this. This is just one of the ways that I like to do things. 
kind of reminds me of the workflow of a vax of a wigwag excuse me you're just working your way down the tubing doing rather than wigwags just twists in this case yep totally it's very very similar to a wigwag just working one little section at a time trying to keep those lines really nice and even flowing in the same direction the more even the spacing and kind of the slope of the lines the more even the finished reticello is going to look exactly and we want them to have the same rate of twisting otherwise then maybe we'll start to look like the lines have straightened out just using your marver there to keep the tubing nice and even the whole way down and since this is going to be the outer sleeve you want to make sure it stays um, big enough that the other piece can fit inside yeah that's always the trick is to trying to blow them even the first time but usually doesn't happen you usually just have to make two sections and adjust them a little bit so it's really good to know how to do that and we're going to go over that a little bit because i don't know if i've ever gotten it exactly right the first time <laughs> sometimes it's really close yep so just finishing off the end there and you've got your blow hose hooked up so you can blow into this the whole time to help keep it nice and even yeah exactly and i'm just pulling off the end there to try to finish the spiral and once i finish that spiral up i'm going to pull off a little bit and then blow a hole and open that up You're just going in there with your punty making sure to twist very evenly pull right from the center and you want to keep those lines nice and even get as much reticello tubing in the end as possible yep exactly blowing a little bit of air in there opening that up just grabbing my jacks good old jacks very nice easy to get it nice and even to uh have the opening pretty even with the walls, maybe a little bit flared past it. Just a tiny bit, because you want to make sure basically that it's not more narrow on the lip. And by flaring it a little bit extra, you can guarantee that. So now I'm going to open this up a little bit more. I'm kind of estimating the size. You're going to work your way down the tube, open it up a little bit further in as well. You know, trying to have it even uh, on the inside the whole way down. Just going to marver it. Make sure the outer wall is even. And then I have a different pair of jacks that I'm going to use for this. It's a little bit bigger pair of jacks. I'm going to go in there. You can see the blades are a little bit thicker. A little bit longer too. Helps keep your hand away from the heat. You know, kind of hot with the big chunk of tubing like that. Exactly. Exactly. And since you hadn't used these ones in a little while, you're putting some extra beeswax on them there to help them slide on the glass. Sometimes that's the flame you guys might see in the uh, inside the tubing on occasion. Oh yeah, it's little pieces of beeswax that drips off and then ignites. Kind of whoosh. And there's a certain smell that goes along mm -hmm. with the beeswax too. It's nice. And yeah. it doesn't leave any marks on your glass or anything, which is nice. Most of the time, no. Once in a while, there could be some residue. Mm. Um, if you use a lot, like that was a lot, you saw the smoke come off of there. So you have to kind of be mindful of how much you use. Um, most of the time, it doesn't leave anything. Popping the blow hose onto your other piece of tubing here. And this is going to be the inner tube. The inner tube. And this way we have to make sure that we are spiraling it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to ask Kevin to pull out the piece so I can look at it. And then I'm going to look at which way the lines are spiraling. And then spiral this one the opposite direction. And you usually talk about it as turn the lines are turning towards you or turning away from you. Yeah. Kind of as a way to help yourself work with it. And that's what I say, and it's probably a difficult thing to define. But, yeah, I like to see where the slope is going and if the slope is going towards me or away from me. So you're going to twist this one up away from you mm -hmm. since the last one was towards you. Yeah. <laughs> and believe me, I have definitely twisted them in the same direction. I've even put them inside and like finished the oh. whole thing. And it just doesn't look as nice unless they're going the opposite direction. <laughs> you're just like, it's just a double layer spiral going on. Yeah. <laughs> so just same technique you used before, working your way down the tube. Got a nice, uh, pretty, pretty penetrating Lynx flame going on there. Yeah, this is just helping me spiral and I'm pulling that out a little bit as well. So I'm making the tube more narrow. Hopefully I can pull it the right size to insert it into the outer sleeve. And since you're working with this white, you're using a little bit darker glasses than usual, right? And a lot of tubing? I don't know why I chose to use those glasses. Those are the ones that are closer to the ones that we used to use. Oh, maybe also because we got all the lights oh, on Oh, it's now the too. lights, yeah. It's just like That's the good old was. days with all the lights. So, Because yeah. we installed some new lights around the bench. I hope you guys can see like the 
detail in the flame. So when you're looking at the flame, you can really not see the soda orange flare and the lights that we added helps with that by creating such a bright environment. But it's so bright that I need to wear darker glasses. I remember that now. Right. Yeah. Our, our human eyes have no trouble seeing in the flame, even in a, you know, a room and seeing the room at the same time, but the camera is not so much. So especially on this shot here, it's a little bit easier to see into the flame now. Yeah. The front shot, especially. And now we have three lights around the bench, all LED lights. They're very nice. Definitely nicer than the old days with the big old CFLs oh. sitting on the bench. Oh, it took so much work to get those all set up and then it'd so fall space. over. And oh, man. Yeah. Break at the bulbs. What a and, mess. Oh, my God. These are so These, nice. Oh, Technology modern, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's is so much better. <laughs> Look, there we go. Trying to fit it in. And oh, Ooh, close. So it starts so to go in, but a little bit too narrow partway in the tube there. So you're going to resize the outer sleeve a little bit. Just trying to take my measurements there, eyeballing that, and then I'm gonna, I can, you know, make a choice here. I can either try to make the inner tube more narrow, or I can make the outer tube more wide. Uh, and sometimes I might need to do a little bit of both. So in this this particular instance, I'm gonna use my jack blades and try to make that a little bit more narrow, where it's uh, the wall might be pushing up a little bit, evening it out along there. You can also use a marver for that. Absolutely. If you're using a marver, I think the reason I use the jacks is because the marver, if unless I'm with your rotation on the marver, sometimes it can pull and stick a little bit and either tighten up your lines or loosen your lines. And I feel like with the jacks, it does that less. Nice. Nice. So you did end up resorting to the marver a little bit here as well. Mm -hmm. You just have to kind of go back and forth um, on the marver and not in one direction. Mm -hmm. And that helps with keeping the lines where you want. So still a little tight. So grabbing that outer section, you'll just open this up a little bit in addition to changing the intersection. Heating it up, making sure they get a nice heat in there, and then I'll be able to grab the jacks and just stretch that out just a little bit. Got that nice mirage flame going on there. Pop the jack blades in, open them up just a little bit, pushing against the side. Yep, you can see it just open just a bit. And hopefully now it'll be the right size, maybe going just a little bit more towards the bottom and open that up. You want to have it even all the way along. That'll help get a nice, uh, nice even vacuum uh, stickage yep. as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to heat that up, put the jacks in, turn really nice and evenly and push down. And that's going to open up the back of the tube. You can see a little more beeswax smoke coming off there. Pop that other piece over to Dustin and Ooh, oh, there we go. Looks nice. pretty good. And you want to make sure you don't tag it yet. So it's stuck a little but you're able to wiggle it out. Mm -hmm. And now you'll just finish up the end of this tube. Pull that off. Make sure that it's nice. Comes to a nice even uh, termination there. And then take off your excess. Yeah. So I've attached the punty and I'm going to heat that up and do a flame cut there. This is a pretty sweet flame cut. Look at this one. It's pretty cool with the lines too. <laughs> I like it. You got to get it nice and thin and then pop it. And then you always want to burn this down so you don't have that really thin yeah. kind of dangerous glass sitting around your bench. You got to do it right away. Whew, dodged a little drip there. Got to be careful with that stuff because it, uh, it will drip off. Yeah. Open that up, flare it open. And then I'll be able to trim the lip a little bit and even that out. Flame cut came out not quite perfectly uh, even around, but that's what the shears are for. Yep. Why don't you guys leave in the comments your favorite time you've ever done a flame cut? The most interesting flame cut you've done. <laughs> There's Young Shy. Check out his music. Young Shy on Spotify. He's got a new album out. It's pretty sweet. And he's off. So you just flared that out, and that's what's going to sit on the opening of your outer tube and yep. where you'll make the connection. Exactly. So I grabbed it with the diamond shears. I'm going to grab the other piece from Kevin and drop that in mm -hmm. really carefully. You don't want to let that slam break the lip or anything. <gasps> oh, it still fits. Good. Yeah. A little like, oh, no. We're so, good to go. So close. So close. And so you're going to start out by putting a lot of heat into that lip and get it sealed all the way around to the outer tube to get an airtight seal. Exactly. So working that all the way around and you're going to use your jacks to kind of push it on there. Just like a little marver. I'm going to heat this up, seal it on, push it together. And there's Young Shy back again. 
taking dinner orders, if I remember correctly. Is that what we were doing? I believe so. Snacks. Some Ike's. Ike's sandwiches, Ike's. chocolates. Ike's are good. So now you're just going to work your way down the tube. Uh, not quite yet. You're going to put some heat into the lip, and you'll have to collect, connect your blow hose before you can start to suction this down. Yeah, and before I do that, I want to make sure that it's really nice and hot. So when I start to evacuate the air, it comes really evenly. And since your vacuum lines aren't quite set up in the studio yet, you're just using your blow hose and sucking the air out manually. Yeah. And, you know, the air isn't too hot or anything. No, and it doesn't have silica particles or anything in it either. And I don't inhale it. I just create a suction. There you go. So just pop in your jacks in the end there. You want to make sure the hole doesn't close up on the end because it would be quite tricky to get that hole open again without losing a lot of tubing. Yeah, it's happened before and normally it doesn't close up like that. This one just kind of closed a little bit, so you got to pay attention. But there's actually no pressure or air or anything that's causing it to, to uh, close up. It's really just the heat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now you're just going to work your way down the tube, sucking as you go. And that's going to pull the walls of the two sections together and give you your nice reticella. Yep, I'm doing it very carefully, uh, one little section at a time, just heating it up right along that edge of where it's sealing and then moving back and down towards the blow tube and then sealing the whole thing using gravity to help uh, help it condense there as you go keep it from uh, keep the lines nice and even all right heat that up you can see you have it really hot on the blow tube there so you got to keep it spinning nice and even Ooh, nice little move there uh -huh, it was floppy hot <laughs> oh, yeah exactly so now you're going to hook up another blow tube and shape the other end of the tube uh, where your because, initial handle was. Yeah, because now I need to put air inside of it and I can't put air inside from the other side. Right. It's no, it's not connected to the proper airspace. It's connected yeah. to the space between the tubes, which is now closed. Yes, exactly. Very well said. So now we're going to close up the other end and now I'm going to be able to start to blow and expand through the inner inner tube there. And you can see that reticello pattern already kind of taking shape. And once I blow it out, it'll look even better. Those nice crossed lines. So you're just pulling out with a nice uh, twist in there to get that nice termination started. All right, pulling that out, making sure that I've pulled out any weird pattern that doesn't really conform to what I want. Sometimes that happens on the end. And now it's time for the old Delta Mag flame. You pulled your torch out away from the bench to keep those new lights safe and uh, gonna heat that thing up the newer lights safe that's true Sorry. <laughs> that, was, that was good yeah. Woo. Oh. for those of you guys who aren't in the photo video industry newer is a brand the brand of the lights that we yes. use just putting some heat in there working your way down the tube and you're putting air in as you go to expand this out into a nice section of tubing yeah you can see it blowing out there nice and even this is working out better than the last time we tried to do this for the hex cup much thinner wall thickness overall yeah. on the reticello. Really nice, uh, even pattern on this one. I think that was the biggest problem with the other one when you say it was the uneven wall thickness yeah. initially on yeah. the on the ready. Sometimes it's like one of those things that just like one thing goes wrong and then it stacks on the next thing and the next thing and the mm -hmm. next thing. So you're focusing here on the half of the tubing away from your blow tube. Oh, look at that nice pattern there. You can, as you said, when you blow it out, it really comes to life. Yeah. And now you're going to switch uh, switch ends again. So you can shape that far end. Yeah, exactly. It just makes it easier if I take this off and attach a blow tube to the bottom here, as opposed to trying to blow all the way to the end on the side that my blow tube is connected to. It can get really floppy that way. Just going to end up with a nicer, more even piece of tubing. I think. And you know, you guys can obviously do it any way that you want. There's, there's really no right or wrong way. As long as you don't get hurt and you're coming out with the best possible product, that's the right way. Mm-hmm. Nice hot seal on there, 12 millimeter blow tube. Put a little extra heat in there and make sure it's nice and solid. Don't want to be losing this on the floor. Nah, it's happened, but I, don't, I hope it doesn't happen this time. I think we'll be good. Slap like right now for this not to happen. <laughs> Putting some heat in the end there, take that blow tube off. So now I'm heating it up, making sure it's nice and centered. And then I'm going to heat up the, the, the far end and blow out the rest of that into the tubing. And you can see there's a little, not quite a termination yet, that cool kind of loop pattern at the end there, but that's not quite what you want. No, but not in this pattern, but there are times when I could use that or 
create tubing just like that with that looping pattern. I've seen other people use that in, in some of their work and it's definitely a cool thing. It's just not the pattern that we're, we're going for in this piece. And you're, here you're using the side of your punty to pull off a lot of glass at once you need, since you needed to pull off quite a, quite a big chunk there. Yep, I'm just trying to get it all the way down to the nub there and pull off any excess weird glass and then apply some heat and put some air in there. Gonna go back in with this Mirage Flame, maybe even kick on the Delta Mag again to get this thing really going. And, and you could totally do this on a Phantom or something. Yeah, Phantom, Mirage is fine. I just, the reason, obviously, I'm just using the Delta Mag is because it speeds it up a little bit. I want to make sure to get as much of this accomplished as I can for you guys in an efficient way. That's the biggest thing you can really, really do with a torch size upgrade is efficiency on big projects. Yeah. And I mean, there's a few things that really would require that, but it's, it's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. Going in here, there it is, kicked it on. Mm -hmm. And you're just going to put some air in the end there. And you're going to want to, you want to try to keep the lines nice and even, make sure it doesn't twist up at all because you've already done your twist. Right, and you can't twist in either direction. So that's the thing about these raticellos, is because there's spirally lines in both directions, you really can't twist at all in either direction anymore. All about keeping it nice and centered, and that'll really help keep those lines from twisting. Yeah. So spinning both directions when you go on your marver so that it doesn't uh, doesn't twist the lines like you were mentioning earlier. Exactly, exactly. Applying the heat, big delta flame. And so a big section of tubing like this, you could either use in size like this, you could pull it down from the start to have a nice thin section of reticello tubing to use for sections, something like that. Lots of options. Yeah, you definitely, this is a great prep work. And the thing about reticello tubing is that you can't really stretch it narrow too much or twist it too much. So when you're making reticello tubing, try to get, when you get to this point, it should really be the size that you want to use. Um, you can get it a little bit smaller and a little bit wider, but if you go too far in the extremes, it'll start to mess up your pattern. It'll condense too much and just kind of disappear. Yeah. But look at that. That hasn't disappeared at all. Very nice. Nice even lines there. Thanks. Good spiral. We'll pop that in the kiln for a minute. Let it uh, let it sit there. And now we'll uh, gonna work on this bubble cap. All right. And we're back 10 minutes later. Pop this hole open and you're going to pull off a section of tubing to use for the body of the bubble cap. Yeah, and then I'll have some extra stuff that I can use for something like this would be like the perfect size for a droplet at this point right here too. We were talking about that. Yeah. A little, uh, it's been one reticello droplet. It was very nice. I saw it recently. Still still well, looking good. one fully reticello droplet. That's true. There's That's a true. couple with reticello sections. That's very true. I was thinking the full ready one. That's, that's owned by... A special friend of ours who used to make some of the best ice water hash in the world. Mm. Uh, yeah, just saw it. Still good. Yep. yep. Good. Still, I'm glad he still, still has it. Still sitting pretty. Yeah. Popping that blow tube on the end there, and you're gonna go in, and you're gonna do a little uh, little cut there with your wheels, I believe. Yeah. So now I'm just gonna take out the section for the bubble cap. I just want a small section, so. I'm just going to take that off. You're being careful to heat it kind of slowly and make sure not to twist it as you separate it. You want to keep the lines even. Exactly. It's heating that up and I'm pulling just a tiny little bit. And then you can see I've pulled it down just a little bit and then I'll be able to pull that all the way off. I definitely noticed this was a much slower cutting off process than with something like colored tubing or piece of clear. Yeah, you got to be careful with the radicella tubing. Otherwise it can get off and mess up wait for it to cool a little bit there you can just give it a little snap and we'll pop that big section in the kiln for later mm -hmm. what do you think we should use it for what write down in the comments let me know what you think you should uh i should use that tubing for in the next piece going in on this section now gonna heat it up really floppy on your blow tube put some air in get it nice and even you're making it trying to make a nice sphere Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you were kind of guiding me on the size of the uh, of the um, bubble cap. Remember, you're, you're mm -hmm. showing me one, and we got the got the banger out because you always yeah. want to make sure it's gonna it's gonna be proportional, right? Yeah. Like you don't want to have a little tiny stubby, you know, nozzle or whatever you'd call it with a big old bubble. Yeah. So I'm going back in there. And I think you're gonna pull a little bit off, make it a little bit smaller. I think so, or I was, I think I condensed it too a little bit to make the walls thicker mm -hmm. and smaller. 
Yeah, there we go. That's a little, looking a little bit more of a good drop, size. Dropped it down a little bit. And you're going to pull a little bit off when you take your blow tube off anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now I'll pop a little hole there. Open that up with one of the blades of the jacks. And you can see that it's you've kept that piece nice and even. Even though it was really, really hot, since there was only one end of a handle on it, it didn't twist at all. Twisting both directions, you know, and that kept the two the lines nice and even, even though it was so hot. Totally. One thing that I think that we should mention here about Reticello is that this technique that I've shown you here is is not their traditional style and way to do this from Italy, which this, this is an Italian technique. And the way that they did this in Italy was with cane and and they twist up the cane and when they twist up the cane it creates a little air gap in between each line crossing so this is a non air trap reticello if we were going to do an air trap reticello we would do a different way but just really wanted to mention that this is a non traditional reticello mm -hmm. without an air trap mm -hmm. so you've got a little piece of uh, some really pretty color here Okay. Quasar. Ah, oh, that's right. Oh, these names. Too many names. So you're just going to open up a hole here. We're going to check out the, the diameter and the, the wall thickness, kind of thinking about how mm -hmm. thick you want the handle to be. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, to be honest, I've probably made like five bubble caps or something like that in my life. And so I keep asking Kevin, like, mm -hmm. well, which size <laughs> should this thing be? And how does it look? I wanted to make it a little bit long. I felt like the elongated shape would be elegant. I do like the, the long handle. I feel like it's easier to hold and, you know, gives you a little more to work with a lot mm -hmm. of the time, too. It means you can't stand it on the on the, the flare mm -hmm. on the top, but that's okay. They end up falling over anyway for me, even if it's really short. Mm -hmm. so. It is a cool color, too. It's, a, it's kind of an interesting, a little bit difficult color to use sometimes, but I really do like the color. I think it's a molten aura color. So you're going to go in here and punty up. And you're going to cut that piece of tubing off of the rest of the bubble. Yeah, and that'll just be prepped up and ready to go. Using your blades there, making sure not to uh, not to crease it or anything in the, in the gap there mm -hmm. since it's so small. And usually if I'm doing a break like this, a lot of times the punny will come off. So I just want to make sure to keep it close to the table. Go in here, make sure that hole stays open. There we go. You see that nice little flare with one blade? Starts off off center, but just working your way using the inner wall that's cold to help guide the jacks a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to grab my shears and just pinch off a little teeny bit to try to make that as even as possible. And something's you know really small like this, that little tiny bit can really matter. You know, you really notice if that little piece of tubing is not quite centered or something like that. Exactly. Now you're going to pull out another even smaller piece of tubing for the little air nozzle that goes into the banger. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. Lynx flame here, putting some air in as you start to pull it out with the punty. Just trying to pull a really small tube. This is like seven or eight millimeter diameter tube. Multiple steps, multiple heats. Slowly pulling it out. It's like a slow motion stringer pull. Yeah, and this color can boil a little bit too, so I'm trying to be extra careful with that as well. There you can see you're starting to get a nice little thin piece of tubing out there. Go in, try to take that off. Put some heat in there, pull that off, and now you can open this little piece of tubing up so you can put a blow tube on and pull it off the bubble. Yeah, and you might want to use the 9mm blow tube for this or something even smaller because 12 millimeter might be a little bit big. I think you grabbed a piece of uh, nine or 10 mil or something like that initially here. Reamer is a little bit easier to get into that tiny, tiny mm -hmm. hole since your jacks aren't quite that fine a point. Yeah, and that is a nine mil tube that I've grabbed there. And that's just a little tip. And I know some of you guys have made a lot of bubble caps and there's probably a different order of operations that you guys like to use, but just let me know in the comments your favorite way, your favorite order of operations to make these. Absolutely. I'm sure some of you guys are cranking them out. Got it, mm -hmm. got it down to a science. Yeah. So putting some heat in there and you want to make sure not to get too close since this is really thin. You don't want to, don't want to over condense it or anything like that. Yeah. And I'm just trying to even out the walls. A little marbling, a little bit of air, little motions for a little piece of tubing. Mm-hmm. 
And it's this is uh, it's interesting. I was talking mentioning to Dustin that this part of the video is so much more real time than the first part, since all this little work is so much faster. Only have to heat it once or twice, something like that. Yeah, exactly. It seems like with smaller work, one heat will really do a lot. Where as some of the times when we're making a bigger piece, it takes forty five minutes just to get enough heat into something to mm -hmm. to make the move that we want. So multi step reaming that open there. Now it's big enough for the jacks favorite tool yep i'm sure you guys noticed i have a tattoo of that tool on my arm heating that up one blade playing that open a little bit getting it ready to attach and so that side you flared is what's going to attach to the bubble just popping that out of the kiln a little bit bigger flame and you'll you want to get a really really centered seal since you'll be really be able to tell on something like this yeah just trying my best to get that nice and even on there Touch it, pull just a little bit, and then I'll probably need to go back in with the flame, make sure that's really nice and even. Blow it out a little bit. Make sure the wall, make sure the hole didn't close up too much. You want to have good airflow. Mm -hmm. Heating it up, condensing it back just a little bit. You got a really sharp flame going on on your links there. It's a nice uh, thing about the GTTs is that flexibility all on one torch. I love it. I mean, the the Herbert Arnold's great too but I really like the GTT torches. Going in again on it a little bit, got your blow hose connected now so that you can put some air in as you're heating that up. That lets you keep it a little more uh, in your line of sight than when you uh, have to bring it up to your mouth to blow into it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the small flame adds a lot of precision for me. Now once I have that nozzle connected, I'm going to take off the 12 millimeter blow tube and prep up that hole for attaching the stem. Pull that off there, turn your flame up a little bit and you'll open that hole up. Heating it up, applying just a little bit of heat right in the center and now I'm going to blow some air into there and open that up and pop the hole. One of the beautiful things about working glass is moments like this with those spinning crisscrossing lines coming to a cool termination where it's orange. I mean, this is just, you know, I think that that's one of the things that we get as glass floors that really the, the people who end up using the pieces don't get to see the real beauty, which, which I think is in the process. Hot glass is gorgeous. Yeah. So cool. Putting some air in there, making sure that hole is nice and open there. Flare it a little bit more with the jacks, matching that to the size of the tubing that you have for the stem. Yeah, and look at that crisscrossing line, so pretty. I know, I love when the ready spins like that. Yeah. It's so cool. Like a wormhole. And thanks for handing <laughs> me that piece, Kevin. Anytime, yeah, since I am, uh, my, my tripod is directly in front of the kiln. Yep. So, uh, got, it, got it all blocked off. Man at work right there. Nice hot seal on there. Once again, making sure it's nice and centered. And you're definitely going to go back into the seal as well. Yeah, but just heating it up, connecting, pulling just a little bit, and then going back into the seal just to make sure that's really nice and connected all the way through. Probably putting a little bit of air in through your blow hose. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it goes. Blowing it out just a little bit and pulling. And now you're going to go pull your punty off, open that up, and flare that for the, the flare you usually see at the, the stem, top of the stem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely if you guys make, uh, you know, any kind of bubble caps or make a reticello, definitely post it up on Instagram. Tag us, uh, at hashtag on the torch and uh, revere glass school. school. Yeah, revere glass school. hashtag revere glass school and hashtag on the torch. And us, absolutely. At what's afoot and at revere glass. We'd love to see what you guys make with this. Uh, it's really cool for me to put up the video and then the next week or two after the video comes up, to see all the things that you guys make and you guys you guys obviously should look for those hashtags too and see what everyone else is making it's pretty cool there's a nice little community of everybody it's so awesome seeing you know a glass blower who's like oh look at this thing i made from your video it's like yeah. what amazing and we had one guy who um took the online workshop with tony kaz and started making skulls and paid for his workshop the next day nice. with, this, with one skull that he made because the workshop's only 99 dollars and it's pretty cool stuff Nailed it. Yeah. Going in here with your jacks, the perfect tool to get that nice even flare for the lip. Yeah, just open that up. I love that color grading on this color too with that something like that. It's cool, right? That purple? Mm-hmm. 
see, we had a little a little talk about, a little debate about colors. It's like, oh, you use a blue, you use line tubing, solid mm -hmm. color, yep. purple. Decided to go with a little bit of this. Yeah, I have to make one more bubble cap for a friend, and I'm going to be using line tubing for it. And uh, you're like, all right, we're going to saw cut off the, yeah. the, the tube. So just checking the height in the banger there. Looks like it's perfect. Boom, there's the cap. The bubble cap. And so we're going to pop this in the kiln, and you'll let it cool overnight, anneal. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to use your handy dandy wet saw. A lot of stuff in the kiln today. Packed up, some cool stuff in there. Yep. All right, and there's the wet saw. We're just going to cut that off. The cool really thing, carefully. Cool thing about this saw is the blade is. You still don't want to run your fingers against it, but it is less dangerous than a uh, conventional saw. I don't think it'll cut you. Nice. I mean, maybe if you push real right, hard. Right. Right. But it's all. It's more of an abrasive wheel. Yeah. Rather than like a saw saw wheel. There you go. Polish the tip with the edge of it, and there is that sweet bubble cap for one of you guys. Yep. Just gonna wash it off, and then Kevin's gonna take some nice picks. There you go. You can see the cool crisscrossing reticella lines and the quasar color. Nice, even tip there. Good airflow. And it does stand. Oh, you got it to stand it up. sure did. Looks like a little heart to me. Aw, so cool. And I just love the way those lines cross, so especially when you spin it like that. Ooh, so sick. Make sure you comment on the video, and this is for one of you guys. We really appreciate you watching. All right, you guys. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that demo, learned a tip or a trick, something you can use in your own work. It was super fun making that. Raticello is one of my favorite techniques. And I was thinking about it. Raticello, wigwags, line work, mm. and marinis are like what I really like to the do. The big three. The big three. And uh, like, definitely went better than uh, the Raticello we did last time too. <laughs> little yes, redemption, yes. little redemption. That was fun. And we still have some leftover stuff, you know, maybe we'll use it for something. Yeah, absolutely. That's the nice part about prepping up a lot of tubing like that, you yeah. know. Make a little bubble cap like that, make a few bubble caps like that. Probably even try a hexagonal tumbler. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I got some questions for you, Dustin. Cool, let's do it. Uh-oh, hang on, my phone's over here though. Got the questions, all right. First up here from Out of Place. Hey guys, love your videos. Very helpful for someone very new to glassworking like myself. As an older beginner, two issues I have is hand steadiness and my eyesight. Any recommendations to help with steadiness and do you know of any protective glasses that are magnified that are actually work, that actually work, that are good? Uh, yeah, well, that's an interesting question. As far as the glasses go, there's two solutions I would recommend. One is prescription glasses. You can get them through Aura Lens. They make the best glasses in the industry. And then you could also get regular prescription glasses and then um, a optivisor which is a jewelry tool and that's uh, basically a magnifying that sits on your head and goes over your eyes you may have seen them when you see a video or photograph of a jeweler and then dan hoffman used a magnifying glass like a very big magnifying glass so definitely there's some options for you for the glasses as far as your hand steadiness um, I don't know personally a lot of tips or tricks, but I would just guess doing hand exercises, breathing exercises, calming down, less coffee, less sugar, <laughs> sleeping well. Like those are the things that I would totally. immediately think these things could affect your hand shakiness or steadiness. I've had people tell me things like that. So, and of um, course, you know, you can just use a roller. You know? Of course. Just like SCOBY glass used, you know, just use a roller on one hand and then work with your other hand like that. You know, that can yeah. definitely be a way to, to help you out, possibly. Or of course a lathe, mm -hmm. if that's in your budget. And the roller that Mountain Glass sent me last week is called the Taffy Roller. It's super cool. Um, I'll nice. see if I can get a shot of it for you guys to drop in here, or Kevin can. It's purple, it's really beautiful. I'm sure you'll be seeing it in yeah. some demos coming up. It's really nice, so. And yeah. a, um, a lot of the Japanese glass blowers that do really tiny work right. actually use uh, like armrests. So they'll have armrests set up on either side of their torch so they can really lean in. And mm. sometimes they'll have the torch set um, into the bench. To into make it, the to bench make it with a, a chair where they lie on their stomach. Yeah, they have like, like the, the forward leaning chair. Well, <laughs> yeah, they are you know, Superman, so yeah. it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. But yeah, they basically have braced their whole body. And I think that's also what all these solutions we're offering are is, you know, the, the rollers, the lathe, these armrests, it braces your arms and body. So that, that, would, that could work. Let us know. Let us know in the comments if that worked for you. Yeah, absolutely. Next up here from Dabin Wan Glass. 
When is, appropriate to when is it appropriate to have your kiln holding at a higher temperature than the normal 1050? Like for yeah. marbles or thick solid work or to keep things in the kiln and closer to working temp? Right, that, that, I mean, he basically answered his own question. Um, I would turn the kiln up doing thick stuff like marbles and marini. I would turn the kiln really high if I was doing pretty thick stuff like this with marini. And I would turn the kiln up really high if I was doing a repair right before I brought it out of the kiln. Those are some circumstances where I would turn the kiln up above 10, 60, 70 is kind of what my normal working range. And then I, I could say my normal working range is 1060 to 1100. And then super hot would be 1150, 12, 1300 even if I was gonna do some really solid marini work. Totally a really, really big pull. Yeah. Nice. Last up here from T Sanchez 503. What size torch tip do you use for your Smith torch? I use the Smith mini torch uh, and the Hornet 1.3 tip, the three inches long one. Nice. I have several of them in the studio. You can get them at Mountain Glass. They have them. I think they're about 70 bucks maybe. I don't know, but. Very nice. Yep. And it's nice because you do a lot of like pushing around glass with that tip too. You're not worried about it, you know, yeah. melting really or anything from the hot glass too much. You don't want to hold it on there or anything, but you know, a little bit. No, I think it's a good point to point out is that I do use the tip to push the glass a little bit. Um, and I like the shape of the tip for that. So that's an unusual technique. I'm not sure how many people do that, but yeah, I, I do use the torch itself as a marvering tool. Totally. Yeah. I think we got to give this cup away before we lose all our light here, Dustin. Let's do it. This is going to Todd Schrader. Really appreciate the comment, man. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Todd. We appreciate all you guys. We appreciate the comments. Make sure you comment on the next video, this video, and all the videos to get a chance to win something that we've made. Absolutely. Thanks right. again for hanging out, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Cool, guys. Yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Questions? We have a giveaway. We come on. Can we switch it again? Can we do the opposite again? What? Where you're like, hey, Kevin, do you have any questions? No. Come on. <laughs>